All right, so we are going to kind of look at this pH scale a little bit more in depth. Um, so pH, the measurements that we've been calculating, is the measure of the ability of an acid to ionize and form hydronium in water. So the pH scale ranges from, and you can see down here, from 0 to 14. And you're probably familiar with seeing that. Now, we did start talking about calculating pOH, and we know that pH plus pOH gives us 14, right? pH plus pOH equals 14. So when the pH is low, the pOH is high, and that continues all the way down. So we, can, we know that if the pH is 1, the pOH is... 13, and so on. So uh, solutions that have a pH less than 7 are acidic. So we know down here, we know these are very strong acids. Strong acids completely ionize and have a pH of less than 3. So they're completely ionizing. So my hydronium concentration is really high. So my H3O plus has a, when I have more, when I have a lot of H3O plus, I have a very low pH. We can see that when I have a high hydronium, 10 to the 0, 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 2, those are high numbers compared to when I have a, um, a pH that is greater than 7. So, for example, these guys, when I have a, then I have um, a very low pH, which means that this is a strong base. And again, my 10 to the negative 7, no, negative 12, negative 13, negative 14, that means I have a very low hydronium concentration, which means that I have a high pH. And high pH tells us that we have a strong base. So some um, solutions, and then we have our neutrals, our milk that is, our milk and blood, which are on either side of the uh, neutral range mark, and seawater. And um, then we have our kind of in-betweens here, our weak acids right here. And then on the other side, we have our weak bases. Weak bases are also called alkalines. I'll write that. So we can say it's alkaline if it's a weak base. And so then just kind of looking at what some strong acids and bases are. Um, hydrochloric acid, lemon juice, stomach acid are all pretty strong acids. And then we get into our, our weak acids like carbonated waters, beers, vinegar, our neutrals we just talked about, our alkaline solutions like baking soda, and then as we get stronger, our milk of magnesia, our Tums, Pepto-Bismol, if you think of those as being basic, because obviously when we have a lot of stomach acid and have an upset stomach, we need to offset that extra bit of acid with base. And then we have our strong bases, um, ammonia with sodium hydroxide being a really strong base. So and we talked about this a little bit in that last um, set simulation we did. So how to measure pH. pH um, meters and indicators are measuring those hydronium ions in solution. The meters give a pretty accurate measurement. We can see that this one measured, we just took the probe and we stuck it right in the solution and it measured that it was 7.30 was its uh, pH. So this was three or more significant figures. We also have this pH paper, which uh, is interesting, a little less high tech, but um, 
These indicators are actually chemicals that react with those hydronium ions. So when it reacts, it changes colors. And we can see on here that, I mean, there's 14 different color ranges where if you stick it in and it, um, into your solution and then you pull out the paper and you kind of hold it up to your key to see what the pH is. So obviously we're not going to see that it's 7.30, but we would see that it is, you know, a color that is, darker than the seven, but lighter than the eight or, you know, so you would, you'd be able to take a pretty good guess. But the downfall to this is that since there is a, uh, there's a, a reaction that's happening here. So we, you wouldn't want to use this paper and stick it into your whole sample because there is a reaction and you, you wouldn't want it to affect the rest of your sample. So you, but you're getting a pretty good approximation. So how would I, if I have a solution here, how would I increase the pH of a solution? So if I want to increase the pH, that must mean that I have a low pH. So I have an acidic solution. So I have um, a low pH. So to increase it, I'm going to need to add something that has a larger pH, which is base. So I would need to add base. And similarly, if I want to decrease the pH of a solution, so I have a, that means I have a high pH. So I have a very basic solution. So to make that number go down or to decrease it, I would need to add acid. If I add a low pH, that should make my number come down. But sometimes this just doesn't work quite like that, quite so easily. And that happens when I have a buffer. So buffers resist changes in pH. Buffers are often found in a biological research. So especially when we're, we're looking at bacteria because the waste can affect their pH and kill the sample and we don't obviously want that to happen. Um, blood is an example of a, a buffered system. Blood has a pH of about 7.4 and it takes a lot, a lot, a lot to change the pH of blood. Um, so for example, if we take, and a buffer is typically contains a weak acid and it's conjugate base. So for example, if we have acetic acid, so this is my acetic acid, and it's a weak acid, and I'm adding water to it, we can see that it does um, dissociate into its hydronium ion and we can see here its conjugate base. But it doesn't, um, it's, it's not dissociating completely. And we can see that here with this back and forth here. So my weak acid and water some of this will be present over here in my product. So it's, it's not completely dissociating. And I'm going to show you here the SPET simulation. So if we look at the simulation and recall back to when we talked about strong acids, and we could see how my initial acid plus water would disassociate completely to my conjugate base and my hydronium ions. Remember looking at that. And when I look at the graph, we can see that my, my acid, there's nothing, there's negligible amounts, so hardly, you know, barely none, um, found in my final product, and it, because it is disassociated into the conjugate base and the hydronium ion. Now, when I switch and look at a weak acid, however, we should see quite a difference because you can see my starting acid is seen in this final um, product of 
you know, looking at the dissociation. I can see my acid. I can see water. I can see my uh, conjugate base, and I can see the hydronium. So they're all present. And if I look at this graph, it also verifies that, oh, I still have quite a bit of this acid still seen, uh, water, yes, and my conjugate base and the hydronium ion. So there is a difference between that, the strong acid and the weak acid when it comes to seen in that final product. So going back to this example here, um, we have what's called an equilibrium. Okay, so this reaction right now is happening in equilibrium. I have my acid plus water, and it's reacting to form this hydronium and my conjugate base. So let's say, okay, you know what, let's add more base. Let's add some hydroxide since I have this base. Um, what's going to happen is this is going to go, oh, I'm, okay, it's going to shift to the left, and it's going to say, well, I, um, then in that case, if you're going to add more base, we're going to have react, and it's going to create more acid, so it'll keep it balanced. Well, okay, so now let's add more acid then. If I add more acid, then what's going to happen is this reaction is going to say, okay, then let's go in this direction. If I'm going to add more acid. We're going to have this reaction happen, and it's going to form more of this conjugate base. So what's essentially happening is that it's wanting to maintain this balance to be the same on both sides and actually to reach kind of a, like a status quo, if you will. And we're not going to talk much about equilibrium. If you, if you take more classes, uh, more chemistry classes, we'll talk more about equilibrium. But uh, just so you kind of get that you know, main idea that this reaction wants to be the same on both sides. And that's actually a really good thing for, um, especially for our biological systems, right? I mean, if you were to, you know, drink uh, a carbonated beverage, and so you've got this acid in your body, you don't want to go right into acidosis. You don't want your body to be overwhelmed and then, um, you know, go into any kind of failure. So having this equilibrium, it would take a lot, a lot, a lot of acid or a lot, a lot, a lot of base to overcome and to kind of break that system. So what's happening kind of in visual form is our buffer really wants to stay in equilibrium right here. And we can see that we have my, um, my acid and my conjugate base wanting to stay in equilibrium. So let's say that I add hydroxide, I add a base. What it's going to do is it's going to recognize that extra base, but it's going to react and push it back to be back level and equal. If I add acid, it's going to recognize this extra acid and it's going to react to, again, push that back to equilibrium. So here's just kind of showing uh, some examples of acids that you will probably uh, throughout this course and especially if you take uh, future chemistry courses, microbiology, biochemistry, any nursing courses. Um, these are some uh, very common uh, buffer acids, weak acids that are used in buffer solutions. And um, so you should, these partially dissociate. That's why they make good uh, buffers. Uh, you will not see any of these strong acids, hydrochloric acid, nitric, sulfuric, perchloric, used in buffer solutions. They would be terrible because they disassociate completely. So um, these weak acids are definitely uh, highly used in buffer solutions as um, both the acid and the conjugate base are present 
at all times in that buffer solution. So what is important to take away from this? Um, and what do you need to know about buffers? Make sure that you understand that buffers are um, mostly re responsible for resisting change in pH. Understand how they work, that it is because of weak acids and its conjugate base that are in solution, uh, that there is equal amounts of this acid and its conjugate base in solution, and that it wants to be in equilibrium, right? We add a little base, and it shifts back uh, to reach equilibrium. We add a little acid, it shifts back so that we have equal amounts of the acid and the conjugate base. Also know that it is very useful in biological research and that it is, uh, that blood is a good example of, um, of a buffered system. You don't need to know how to create a buffer system, how to synthesize one, which even which acids are um, good for buffers. Just, just understand the concept that buffers want to resist change and that they want to remain uh, in equilibrium again, with that weak acid and its conjugate base.